How much room do you have in your life? And that's the question that I was hinting at last week when I was talking about, can I share something that life feels overwhelming? And I want to talk about this one word, joy. I've been thinking about it within the context of my kids, in the context of my life, and just in general, when I see different men at the playground or just in different parts of life where I just see people interacting with their kids, I often think about, is that person creating room for joy? Now, I've heard a lot of different contexts about joy, like happy isn't joy, and joy is more of an experience in the moment than it is a feeling of being happy. And for preparation for this episode, I decided to go to Google and type joy versus happiness, and I want to share what it said. Happiness is an emotion in which one experiences feelings ranging from contentment and satisfaction to bliss and intense pleasure. Joy is a stronger, less common feeling than happiness. Witnessing or achieving selfishness to the point of personal sacrifice frequently triggers this emotion. When I think about how we set up our mind, how we set up our life, we often use the word happy. We, I will be happy when. I will be happy when I have 10 coaching clients. I will be happy when I make $100,000. I will be happy when fill in the blank. The problem when you say things like that is you're putting this feeling into the future that you have to reach this point in order to feel happiness. And it sets up this dichotomy and a very good horse and carrot analogy here where you're chasing something in the future that just keeps moving. Because let's reframe this again. There are many things in my life where I said, you know what? When I get X, I'm going to be happy. This experience, this podcast is almost in that same mode. I remember thinking when I had a job, you know, I'm going to be happy when I'm able to work for myself. You know how many unhappy days I've had sitting at my desk? A lot. That the happiness was just something else that I reframed. And now that I have what I wanted prior, I now reframe it. I'll be happy when... I cannot have to worry about money. And again, even when I do have money, I'm going to be saying, you know what? I'm going to be happy when fill in the blank. And it's just this thing that keeps moving on and on and up. Which then also leads me to think about how we set up ourselves to experience happiness. So I'm always thinking about like and questioning in my head, if I have happiness in the future at some goal, if I have to be somewhere to get somewhere, Or I'll have a feeling X, like if I can go to Target and buy the new iPhone, or if I can get an iPad, or if I can get that latest new vehicle, then I will be happy. I first have gotten pretty good at recognizing like, ooh, I'm pushing my happiness out into the future and I need to bring it back into the present. Next, I'm thinking, how can I actually take the feeling that I want in the future and bring it into today? Now, that doesn't often show up as happiness, Because happiness to me is this word that American society dresses things up with. But in reality, everybody's miserable. Like one thing that I really hate or one interaction that I have to run into many times is when you're checking out, people always ask, how are you doing? 99.% of people are going to say good and fine. When 90%, if not more, are not good or fine. And we don't really think about that. And we don't really realize the lie we're telling ourselves. So I don't like the word happiness. To me, it's about joy. And the reason why I titled this is, is because joy is a feeling of being in the present, of actually like slowing time down in the moment that you're sitting in and realizing how good it really is. Even this past weekend at Easter, I was playing football with my son and with my nephews. And I just remember thinking like, man, this is an amazing feeling. We're all outside. It's nice weather, even though today we got smacked with some snow. And in those moments, I'm just like, yes, this is what life is about. Or another one, I'm often going to lunch with someone locally here during the week. I try to go out to lunch one time a week to either meet someone or I just go out to get out of the house and be in a different spot. And in those moments, I'm finding joy like, you know what? I'm really joyful that I can experience this choice, this being here and having a conversation with someone in town that I really don't get to see often. And in those moments, joy is something that I invite into my life more. 
we don't often think of that and we don't often frame it in that language of how do we invite joy versus happiness? Because joy is a feeling that we have access to every single moment. No matter where you are listening to this, whether you're at the office, in a workout, or in a commute, if you truly just kind of slowed your heartbeat down a little bit, take a few deep breaths, there's probably something within your peripheral vision right now in your view that, you know what, you can just look at and be like, you know what, I'm really appreciative that we have that. Or I'm really glad that I have this moment and that I can feel joy. Or even if you just reflect on how good your life truly is, that it's not a comparison game. It's like, you know what? I have an abundant amount of love. I have kids who always give me that hero's welcome when I come to the door. My wife loves me. Our health is in order. And I have so much to be thankful for. Joy can come from gratitude as well. If you have a gratitude exercise that you practice daily, finding joy in the daily times is extremely important. Now, I want to take a sidestep because there is a big giant elephant that I hinted on last week that I want to solidify here in the context of joy. And that elephant is you might not actually have room in your life for joy. If you have never dealt with or processed a traumatic event, if you have been swallowing down your emotions, if you are the station wagon that I talked about on Friday, where there is so much stuff in the back of the car that there's no room left, you cannot invite joy into your life. It's very difficult. And if it is, it's going to be very fleeting because you're almost constantly worried about all the stuff that you haven't processed instead of inviting joy. So joy is something that you need to work towards and you need to do the inner work in order to get there. You can't just listen to this episode and run out there and try to experience joy because you're going to feel like, you know what? I don't feel like I can do this. It's not something that I feel like I have access to. And then you're going to feel broken. And you're not broken. You just need room. You need to process those things that happen. You need to let them go. And I will never forget my oldest daughter came downstairs one time and she thanked me for helping her create room in her life for joy. And she's like, thanks for letting me get all those thoughts out of my head because now I have room for happiness. Now I have room for joy. You can't create joy and have room for it to feel in your body at a deep level that's going to allow you to change your life and the relationships around you unless you have room for joy in your life and you have to invite it. You have to process a lot of things that you're holding back. And oftentimes, the earliest indicator that you have something you need to process is if your first reaction is to raise your voice or change your tone or start yelling to get there. Those speak to an emotional maturity, and that maturity is going to prevent you from truly experiencing the joy that comes from this. That is all I have for you guys today, a little bit longer than normal, but an important topic of how to invite joy, the difference in joy versus happiness, and how I think about these in my life so that they can show up better in yours. Guys, that is all I have, and we'll be back again tomorrow to do it again.